Plots, betrayals, executions, battles and bloody massacres, the Wars of the Roses had them all. It was a complex and brutal series of conflicts that lasted more than 30 years. We know the wars, of course, as the struggle between the Red Rose of Lancaster and the White Rose of York. But the end result of a huge death toll and many twists and turns was that the Tudor dynasty was born. And that is in great part down to a Welsh nobleman who switched sides and reaped huge rewards. Rhys Sap Thomas, imagined here in an artwork from a later time, was born into a prosperous family in Llandilo in southwest Wales in 1449. During the early years of the wars, which erupted when he was six years old, most Welsh nobility supported the Lancastrian king, Henry VI. In fact, Rhys's grandfather, Griffith Ap Nicholas, was killed in 1461, fighting against the Yorkist Edward, Earl of March, who soon after became King Edward IV. After Lancastrian forces were crushed at the horrific Battle of Towton, Rhys's father, Thomas Ap Griffith, and his uncle Owain retreated to Carrig Kenin Castle near Llandilo. After a siege, they were forced to surrender. Their lands were confiscated, and in 1462, Thomas and Rhys went into exile in Burgundy. Five years later, when political and military manoeuvrings briefly restored King Henry VI to the throne, Thomas and Rhys were back in Wales, and some family lands were recovered. But then Edward IV became king again. Many people's loyalties, swayed by self-preservation, switched to the Yorkists. King Henry VI was, it seems, conveniently murdered in 1471. When King Edward died 12 years later, his brother, Richard of Gloucester, seized the throne from his infant nephew to become King Richard III. But Richard's main supporter, the Duke of Buckingham, subsequently turned against him and led a revolt aimed at installing the young Henry Tudor, Earl of Richmond, to the throne. Henry, who was exiled in France, was a descendant of the Lancastrian branch of the House of Plantagenet. His father, Edmund Tudor, was a half-brother of King Henry VI and a descendant of the Welsh Tudors of Penmoney the Anglesey. Rhys inherited lands from his father, who had been killed in a skirmish. But Rhys didn't join the Duke's rebellion, which failed, and was seen as supportive of the king. His reward was that Richard made him his principal lieutenant in southwest Wales. It said that Rhys swore an oath of loyalty. Nevertheless, it seems likely that Rhys had been in touch with Henry Tudor. On the 1st of August 1485, Henry's small fleet of 30 ships landed at Mill Bay on Pembrokeshire's Dale Peninsula and close to his birthplace of Pembroke Castle. Rhys's job as Richard's man in West Wales was to intercept and attack the invader, but he didn't. Instead, he evidently made some kind of agreement and, after a short while, joined forces with him. Rhys had helped to assure Henry's foothold in Wales. Henry and Rhys's forces marched separately, gaining new supporters along the way. Rhys's route can be seen in green on this map. They met up again at Welshpool before crossing into England. By then, Rhys had a sizable force of several thousand men under his command. On the 22nd of August, they met King Richard's army. In the resulting Battle of Bosworth, Rhys's men halted a great initial attack. In a bold move, Richard and his knights charged directly at Henry. But the king was unhorsed and killed. The contemporary Welsh poet Gitor Glyn implies that Rhys himself killed Richard with a pole-axe, the weapon seen here. Another source states that one of his men struck the fatal blow, which seems more likely. Whatever he did that day, Rhys was certainly well rewarded for it. He was knighted on the field of battle by the new King Henry VII. Rhys remained loyal to Henry for years to come. He fought in various campaigns at home and in France, and was showered with lands and titles. In 1505, he was made a Knight of the Garter, which he later celebrated with a great tournament at Carew Castle, where he lived. When Henry VII died, 
Rhys gave his loyalty to the new king, Henry VIII, and he led a very prosperous later life. Rhys married twice, first to Eva, daughter of Henry Ap Gwilym of Curt Henry in Carmarthenshire, and later to Janet, daughter of Thomas Matthew of Radder, Cardiff. There is one more twist to this saga. Rhys Ap Thomas died in 1525. His body now lies in St. Peter's Church, Carmarthen. Soon after, his grandson, Rhys Ap Griffith, was accused of treason for inciting unrest among the citizens of Carmarthen over an inheritance dispute. King Henry VIII had him beheaded in the Tower of London in 1531. Rhys Ab Thomas was important to Henry VII's success. He didn't oppose his landing in Wales, his forces helped to secure a victory at Bosworth, and his men may well have killed King Richard. It's just possible, possible, that without the decisions that Rhys made, we would not have seen the Tudor rulers who became icons of British history. <laughs>